space that you can just go and you don't really have to worry about anyone. Yeah. What are your experiences of growing up LGBTQIA plus in Australia? So my experience growing up with the LGBT plus community was, it's been quite positive. There's been a lot of recent things coming around that people are feeling a lot more comfortable about coming out and being their true selves and not having to like hide behind a, a wall pretending to be someone that not. Well, my household is very accepting. I have a sibling who was born the sex of a female and they switched to non-gender. And that, that's the same as me as well. We do help each other out. Do you feel like things have changed in Australia over the past few decades or even a hundred years? I think it's changed a lot because you see 1975, they weren't really accepted and now I see a lot of more gay people, more trans people out. Say a hundred years ago, it was basically if you were gay or identified as someone that you weren't expected to be, people would like look at you as if you're an alien and they would disrespect you like and they would just treat you horribly. The truth is that for a really long time, Australian law criminalised homosexuality. You see, because of colonisation, early laws in Australia were based on the laws at the time in Britain, including anti-gay laws that dated back to the 16th century. Following Federation in Australia, those criminal laws remained on the books in every state and territory, uh, criminalising gay sex in Australia, even if it's consensual. In some states and territories, the punishment was up to life in prison or even the death sentence. And while those laws weren't always enforced, they did still leave gay people open to blackmail, harassment and discrimination by law enforcement and society in general. If people were publicly shamed at one of these beats or, or were known to be a gay person, they had no protection in terms of employment law, they had no protection um, from, from any kind of discrimination in public. Now, if you're thinking, did the laws only target gay men? Well, yes, there have never been laws in Australia or the UK which specifically targeted gay women, although they and other sexuality and gender diverse people still experienced a lot of discrimination throughout the 20th century. I think that there was, there was far more concern and fear of sex between men being potentially corruptive um, and something that all men could be tempted into and young men could be potentially corrupted by. In the 1960s, society started changing in a big way. There were growing social movements in Australia and around the world, calling for more rights and freedoms for women and for black people. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. The movement around LGBT rights was also growing. And in 1967, a big thing happened. England and Wales decriminalised homosexuality. Then in 1969, there were the famous Stonewall riots in New York City, where people held spontaneous protests after police raided a gay bar. Some Aussies were inspired, and by 1970, the first Australian gay rights organisations had been created in Canberra and Sydney. And I think uh, Australian activist groups um, were really looking at these developments overseas and saying, okay, we actually can get some of this stuff forward. In 1972, a high profile murder in South Australia changed everything. Gay university lecturer, Professor George Duncan had drowned in the Torrens River after being thrown in by a group of men suspected to be police officers. It led to outrage, and in 1975, South Australia became the first state or territory to decriminalise homosexuality. It also made the age of consent the same as it was for heterosexual people, something that wouldn't happen in most other states and territories for many more years. The ACT was the next to decriminalise homosexuality in 1976, and in the 1980s, most other states and territories did the same. 
The exception was Tasmania. Tasmania held out until they were eventually forced to by law to decriminalise gay sex. That came after Tassie activist Nick Toonan took the matter to the United Nations, who declared the law a violation of international human rights. In response, the Paul Keating government stepped in and passed a federal law overriding state law and officially decriminalising homosexuality throughout Australia. There were plenty of other significant events over the years for LGBTQ plus rights. Like the first Mardi Gras held in Sydney in 1978, where activists known as the 78ers came up against police. But it was the start of this huge event that's still celebrated today. In 2013, the Julia Gillard government made a big change to Australian federal laws, making it illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation or gender identity. And in 2017, the majority of Aussies voted yes to legalise same-sex marriage. Around the world, there are still more than 60 countries that criminalise LGBTQ plus people, including punishments like the death penalty. And here in Australia, while we've come a really long way from where we started, some say there's still a way to go. We've definitely become more accepting, but there's still parts of society that need to be more accepting and learn more about it. I think social media is a big problem. It has a lot of negative effects on the community um, and can put a lot of people down and put people in a place that they shouldn't be in. In schools, quite recently, I've noticed a lot of disrespect towards people in the community, like a lot of slurs have been getting thrown around. But in terms of how it's going, I'd say it's a lot better than what it was a few years ago. Homophobic, transphobic slurs have started like coming up again and people have started saying that. I hear it all the time now. It makes you feel uncomfortable and I would like to see changes where people feel more comfortable in their bodies. And what would your advice be to someone who might be feeling like they're struggling with their identity? Yeah, just try to stand up for what you believe and not let anyone bring you down just because of what they think. Pride means to me being sa in a safe environment where I can be happy and loud and proud. If you hear people calling you names or being disrespectful to you, you can report it. Just don't let that sink deep down inside and build up over time. Just tell someone about it and make a change, I guess.